I thought I'd begin by making a comment about the liturgical calendar, which we experience a change today. Is uh, normally we'd be celebrating the 18th Sunday in ordinary time, but instead we're doing the Feast of the Transfiguration because the Feast of the Transfiguration always falls on August 6th. So when August 6th happens to be a Sunday, we're doing the Transfiguration. Next week, we'll be doing the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. You will not hear the readings for the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time this year. You know, it's interesting in, in business when uh, there's difficulty in understanding the message uh, that the, the bosses are trying to make, they often have uh, what I think is called an offsite, and that way the boss can let the people know what he really wants them to do. Uh, in religious circles, an offsite is referred to as a retreat. And, uh, and so, to understand what's going on in the, the uh, transfiguration, which to me is a retreat, you have to understand what went before in the readings of, uh, of the gospel. And just before the reading we read today in the gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that he is going to go to Jerusalem, be arrested by the priests and the elite, tortured and killed. And then he tells the disciples, and if you want to follow me, you're going to have to carry your cross in order to follow me. And you can imagine the disciples listening to this and going, wait a minute, this isn't what I necessarily signed up for. What is going on here? And so Jesus takes the, uh, the very top leaders of his group and he goes up into a high mountain to a, a kind of have the offsite and a retreat. So what is a retreat? It's a meeting for the purpose of spiritual growth. It can be one person or many, usually many. Uh, it can be from an hour to a month. It can be local or it can be distant. And for me, the elements of a really good retreat are it's held in a remote area, you experience a very profound spiritual event, and you come away from the retreat changed in some way. So let's look at the retreat on the top of the mountain. Clearly, going up to the top of the mountain is a, a uh, a place of no distractions. It's a remote area. And when you think about the Gospels, how often did Jesus try to go off and pray and somebody came and said, my slave is sick, come and heal him. My daughter has died, come save her. You know, all these times uh, Jesus is distracted and I'm sure the disciples were too. So they went up to the top of a mountain where it would be quiet, there'd be no other people. And uh, although in this day and age, there's a lot of people on tops of mountains, but that didn't experience wasn't Jesus' experience. Also at the time of Jesus, uh, being at the top of the mountain was being close to the divine. And sometimes when I get at the top of a mountain, although I will confess I cheat, I take a ski lift to the top of the mountain and I don't generally climb. But nevertheless, when you look out, you do really feel uh, closer to God in that time. And then the spiritual event, well, it's pretty clear that when the disciples saw Jesus, Elijah, and Moses, and Jesus is uh, in white, they're having a very spiritual event. They're seeing things that they had never seen before. And, uh, and in many cases, uh, Jesus is it's transfigured before him. And many biblical scholars, and I agree with them, will sit there and say, they are now seeing Jesus in a very different light. Up to this point, he was a good teacher, maybe a prophet, but now all of a sudden, where he's conversing with Elijah and Moses, it's pretty clear that he has a position that's a little higher than a prophet. And so therefore, the, he is transformed. Their understanding of him is transformed in front of them. The apostles see him in a new way. And they are changed in the process. Because like I said, now they see Jesus in a new light. Uh, he's not just that prophet, he's completely different. And it's gonna change their whole understanding of their mission. Now they understand taking up their cross and following him. This isn't a walk in the park anymore. This is a pretty hard thing that they're taking up to do. Now, we should all consider making retreats, and I strongly encourage them. Uh, and sometimes you can make a retreat when things are difficult. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe your relationship isn't going well and going away. But you don't have to have a bad thing in your life to make a retreat. You can often just sit there and say, you know, I need to get closer to God. I think I need to put my cell phone down, pack away my papers, shut off my computer, and go somewhere and be close to God. Uh, and it's a way of mo boosting your spirituality and really getting closer to God. Now, I find there's many different ways you can do a retreat. There are formatted retreats, 
And uh, one of them that's done in our, our uh, c uh, county is called Acts. And it's done about once a year, different parishes seem to host it. And I believe there's one next spring. And if you just go online, uh, you can find it. Uh, another very good retreat is one that I've made several times. Well, I've made once and then I assisted in others is Curcio. And again, it's a four day event and you uh, really do cro grow closer to God in the process. And interesting enough, in the Archdiocese of Baltimore, we have Spanish Crucios and we have English Crucios. You can take your, your choice. By the way, um, I, I was able to do twice what they call Kairos in prison, which is a retreat that's based on the Crucio formula. Uh, other retreats are Marriage Encounter, um, and then Bon Secours has a number of retreats that, that you could uh, look into. Go online, or if some of you may actually get their little booklet on retreats, but there's a lot going on out there. They're day-long, weekend-long, even week-long retreats that you can go to. But you can also make personal retreats, you know, and this is when you just take time to get away. Um, it's wonderful to come to Mass, but maybe on a Wednesday evening when things aren't bad, shut off the TV, shut off your computer, and just sit there and, and maybe reflect on the readings for the day or, or just, uh, you know, talk to God and say, God, I'm here, help me. Um, it's even better to find a remote location. And again, I'll show you that uh, Bon Secours is a wonderful um, remote location. They have a uh, labyrinth that you can walk around and, and reflect on God. We also have the benefit of, what is it, the Shrine of St. Anthony, which is another place you can go up to and visit and just walk around in the woods and, and uh, be close to God in the process. Um, you can find a, a scripture pa passage um, and at home, another thing you can try is the Lexio Divina, where you take uh, readings and reflect on them. And it's a way of growing closer. And, and usually when you come out of these, you're changed. You're at more at peace. You're closer to God. Uh, this doesn't have to be a one-time event. You can make a number of retreats, either the personal or, or reformed ones. And finally, uh, I'd like to comment that even we adults can benefit by a little time out. <laughs>